You're listening to the Doug Stanhope Podcast. All right, as uh, much anticipated, the uh, much hyped, or I've been hyping it, the uh, podcast I've been uh, looking forward to is the results from my doctor. But first, I have to update everyone on the uh, Austin uh, Austin weekend. I keep saying weekend. It was Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. But uh, the taping, thanks to all the Patreon people, especially who came out. We got rid of all the posters. We taped two days. It was uh, it went very well. Uh, I haven't seen any footage, but I'm never in a hurry to look at footage of myself. And then on Thursday, uh, got up to do the Joe Rogan podcast. And I took an edible. It took a 10 milligram about 9 a.m. And uh, I had a cocktail. I even remember I mixed it with that uh, that uh, uh, turmeric. This is my doctor here, uh, Dr. John. Senate, uh, and this is Dave Rader, you know. Uh, so then uh, I, I, I took an Uber there. This is what I remember. I took an Uber there, got there 20 minutes before uh, kickoff at 1 p.m. And uh, the last thing I remember was uh, just after sitting down with Joe Rogan. And I fucking, the next thing I know, I was vomiting that night or like 11, 12 at night. I had made Bingo take footage of me when I came in the door because I was so, I just knew something was fucked. It wasn't, this wasn't an edible gone wrong or so I thought. And then when I woke up, I thought, oh, fuck, maybe something really is wrong with me physically because I shouldn't, like, I have no fucking memories. Then I found footage. Fortunately, I have email from a guy, the Uber driver who dropped me there at fucking Joe's place, had his own trivia show in his <laughs> Uber, and it's guess what country I'm from. Okay, here I have a comedian. He's a stand-up comedian. Yes, I am. Here this dog. He wants to guess where I'm from. Let's see if he can make it. So here's the rules. You got three guesses to make. You're trying to guess which country I'm originally from, okay? You can ask as many questions you want, but I won't answer any question like, are you from south of Japan, now uh, north of China? Or uh, don't ask me what the colors of my flags are. Nothing obvious. Like yeah, that. I'll tell you what the color of that uh, light was red. You almost <laughs> went through it, but go ahead. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't. Okay. So I have five minutes of footage of me completely fucking lucid going in there. And uh, the next thing I know, I am fucking... I'm just annihilated. And I didn't remember till we brought it up today. Bingo said, well, yeah, because I thought I was, I only made one drink for myself. No, I had a drink with Bingo on the way to waiting to call the Uber in the hotel was a bartender's competition that we crashed on our way through <laughs> to get a drink. And then I was heckling them. <laughs> and she said I was being a dick. Oh, oh yeah. What could maybe have maybe that's how I could have gotten roofied. Because the whole time I wanted to believe that I got roofied. Because I don't want to believe that uh, unless I had got to Rogan's and just started. I have to fucking ask Rogan like to look at footage. Because unless we had a shot competition from the time we <laughs> sat down till I woke up at eleven o'clock. But that footage of getting into the hotel. It's like five o'clock at night, so there's no fucking way. Is your ass sore? <laughs> no, but good segue. <laughs> we have to leave at like four o'clock in the morning, uh, so yeah. I'm just out of my head. I made Bingo videotape all of you know all of me puking. Like once I knew there was videotape early, I just kept telling her to put it out till I got conscious enough to go. Uh, this probably doesn't tell a story. Let's just fucking delete all that. Uh, then uh, we've had this set up with you. I get the at the airport where I'm still like, I can't even, you know, I'm not even risking drinking water because I don't want to puke again. And I get the email from you, the text message saying, hey, your fucking cola guard came back dirty. That's not how you phrased it. But <laughs> hey, listen, you're going to have to get a colonoscopy because uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's problematic. And that's when I asked, is there anything else? Then I'm thinking, okay, I definitely have cancer, and that would explain it somehow. That was before I knew about the, oh, yeah, I forget about a heckling <laughs> competition. Oops. So, let's get up my ass. <laughs> let's do it. Uh, 
we you you said I had uh, not only was it, all right. Let's stay with the asshole at first. <laughs> uh, that could be anything. I did some research and read what I wanted to read, and <laughs> it said that like forty two percent of positives for Colagard are false, and forty two percent are uh, that you go up your ass. And they, there's a good chance it's hokum. You have to understand, I'm not on the side of doctors a lot, <laughs> or, or the medical profession. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's fine. Uh, there are false positives and false negatives. Um, you know, you took a, a decent first step to make sure, you know, instead of rushing right to get your butt checked, uh, you did the cola guard where you shit in the box and send it back to them. Yeah. And, uh, and then it tells you, well, you know, this may indicate that you need further evaluation through colonoscopy. So that's what yours said. Doesn't say that you have cancer. In fact, more than likely you do not have cancer, but you might have a polyp. Uh, you might have a little trace blood in your stool. This, so. this, is, uh, this is where I have issues, but right now I'm, I'm all in. I haven't, I haven't drank since that fucking night. Like I, I get so panicked. I've, I've stopped doing most things. Uh, I have a, well, not yet, not yet, but I have a bucket <laughs> of fucking supplements shit I already was taking. Uh, but yeah, if you have a polyp, they'll burn it off. This is like where someone gets checked for skin cancer and every little fucking mole could be a thing. It's better safe. Uh, you know, well, it's, it's always a good idea to get checked, you know, and if you find something early, they can treat it early. So getting a mole removed, yes, good. You know, all the damage in your skin happened when you were a kid. You know, yes, wear sunscreen yeah. and all that stuff. But oh, it, by the way, this if you're, if you're just catching up, uh, John and I were, were, uh, grew up in the same neighborhood. So I hadn't seen him since I found out he's a local physician here. Uh, since a nurse practitioner, practice. but... That's what you get when you go to the doctor these days. You get a PA or a nurse practitioner because all the docs are retiring because of the aging population. And uh, everyone's suing them into fucking poverty. <laughs> yeah, we got no money, so good luck with that. Tell them where you grew up. Yeah, in, in Worcester, where we grew up. Worcester, Massachusetts. Yes, so tanning, Square. Uh, with baby oil and no other protection. Actually, it's, less than, it's worse than no protection. Yeah. Baby oil, literally, and you lay out... Yeah, uh, and and that's probably the last time I saw you at Cook's Pond when oh, yeah. you were eight to ten years old. Yeah, you know, and I was just a year older or so in uh, local swimming hole. But yeah, how many skin tags, moles have you had removed? Me personally, yeah, uh, probably eight to ten. Oh no shit! Yeah, not all at once. No, nah, it wasn't just one doctor that was a little psycho. No, nah. any polyps removed? Uh, no polyps. Well, I did. I didn't have a polyp removed. Well, maybe I did. Jesus, I don't know. It was. Uh, <laughs> I had a colonoscopy. I've done Colagard. I've done a colonoscopy. Um, I think it was a ten-year return. You'd think that I'd remember that stuff, but you know, it gets paved over by other stuff. So yeah. Uh, all right. I'm just making sure you. I'm trying to do. You know, practice what I preach. Is it right. is it ten years of the the. the... Play it safe every like at fifty so, or fifty five, and then another ten years. So now it's forty five. It used to be fifty, yeah. but the American diet sucks. Yeah. So it's more likely to cause cancer earlier. So they started testing at forty five now, and then if you go to, you know, the the options are a Cologuard, uh, which is good for three years, or a colonoscopy, which is good for five to ten years. So the colonoscopy. If they don't find anything, it's good for 10 years. Yeah. If they find something, it's usually one, three, or five-year return. So Charlie tells me that they knock you out yeah. for it. And uh, you still uh, talk about the uh, <laughs> that uh, haze of uh, uh, twilight, twilight. Whatever, whatever drug it is, it, it, you cannot, I mean, literally got to eight trying to say seven, and I woke up. Counting backwards? Yes. Yeah. So from 10... Could not even say all of seven. Woke <laughs> up feeling great. And the the thing is with the because my brother I have a twin brother. He went in and they had he had a couple polyps and they take care of that right there. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's what I was gonna ask. So what what happens is they got a little lasso. I mean, yeah, 
Tell me if I'm right. You're they right. Have a little lasso. Yeah. It goes in there. It must feel like they're playing a video game. <laughs> they just they just loop it like they're catching a raccoon in your yard, <laughs> and then it cauterizes it right there. It yeah. takes care of it. Now, like you said, if you do have that, then you will want to come back one, three, five, whatever. whatever yeah, and they'll get. send that polyp to the lab to see if Bio. it's cancerous or not. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how much ass work you've done, but how much different is that from uh, hemorrhoidectomy? Because that mm. describes what Joe uh, Vernon went through to get a hemorrhoid removed, and he said it was the most agony he's ever felt. Hemorrhoids are exterior. Life. But uh, uh, no, not necessarily. They can be in or out, interior or exterior. Really? Yes, you can do the same thing. They call it banding, yeah. where they can put a band around it, just like you said with the raccoon trap. Uh, so that's a way to do it. Viet Cong snare trap. But they're, they're kind of different animals. A, a hemorrhoidectomy, most of the time you're sitting down all the time, so your ass cheeks spread and your ass contents start to come out. So if you're sitting down, you know, you got to sit up and pull your cheeks together and, you uh -huh. know, if you feel it in the shower, just stick your finger up your butt and Push it back up there. Uh, yeah. You asked. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I didn't. Can I go? <laughs> <laughs> Demonstrate this, a post. This is where Dave Rader's going to come in later because he's a uh, very uh, health oriented, uh, but also a smoker and drinker. Like he's a booze bag and a. You know. So he, I think, will. I'm going to test you on some uh, some stuff, and I think he might have a, a keener angle on stuff that is booze bag specific because he's a, a he's a hypochondriac on some levels. Me? Yeah. Well, no. you know about your fucking triglycerides. <laughs> well, yeah. who knows that when you're 45 years old? People who go to a doctor once every 10, you, 20 years. You should only go to a doctor if like it's an emergency. Like that's the actually ambulance not true. brings you, and then they do a lot of tests that you don't. That, like, uh, that's the opposite of preventative medicine. Uh, if you get that, so yeah. If you go right. early, you can find stuff early. Which is the true. point is, there's yeah. a lot of things that a guy. Are you a boozer, by the way? Uh, I know it, uh, not much. Yeah, all things in moderation. You're very yeah. Massachusetts. I mean, just seeing you in the office was cool, but <laughs> when you just drove up on a fucking big Harley, <laughs> that is so Worcester that you'd be like. 57, 58, 58, yeah. 58 with a fucking Holly and three kids. <laughs> no kids. No kids? No. Oh, shit. Yeah, I'm not part of the uh, breeding pool. Oh, fuck. You're a good company. Yeah. Well, you, you get a wife. Well, you know my family, right? So you should yeah. be saying, yeah, you made the right decision. Yeah. You know? Oh, we'll get to the family. There is murder coming up in this podcast. <laughs> How often are murder we doing mayhem. something? You go, oh, wait, later on there's murder. <laughs> should I open with murder or should I open with being fucking it's usually something you and then walk up into to. ass play, but not related. <laughs> uh, triglycerides yeah. that I should know about. Yeah. Well, your triglycerides are through the roof at 674. So the goal is... Under 150. We don't really get concerned until it's over 500. Okay, and this is cholesterol, which is the one thing I, I never even thought about. Yeah. I worry about, you know, liver things and diabetes things. Surprisingly, your liver's in good shape. The fuck? Yeah. How is that? I don't know. He's got room to play. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Right. I hadn't even asked that. <laughs> Oh, and that's when I did. I picked up uh, my drugs and uh, there's, there's some kind of statin yeah. and uh, another fish oil, but it's prescription fish I, oil. I actually did want to ask you. Phenofibrate, yeah. Because normally fish oil is something you can buy at GNC or local yeah. supermarket and it will reduce your triglycerides. Yeah. I, I got on krill oil because I can't take yeah. krill oil for the same reason that it works. Yeah. But however, I've never heard of tri triglycerides at that number. I've, I've never heard anybody be that high, so it has to be pharmaceutical grade. Is it different than, than a fish oil that you pick up in a store? Not a lot different. The only benefit is that I can prescribe it and his insurance covers it. Okay. Oh, I'm you know. so fucking deep in fish oil. <laughs> <laughs> I've had them because what's the fucking scam with CVS or Walgreens? Buy one, get one free. Every fucking time, Safeway, vitamins, buy one, get one free. Well, I'm going to go off the kick. I'm going to eat four fish oils in four days, and then five years from now, give me that bucket of shit. 
And this is not everything, John. No. Once, once, you, a, once you told me about pack. the triglycerides on my plane, I uh, I started ordering shit once I landed. <laughs> this is just the stuff I already had. Yeah. All right. We're going to play uh, Pop It or Drop It. Yeah. Uh, uh, these are uh, supplements or vitamins. This is a milk thistle. That's supposed to be good for the liver. Yeah. And maybe that's why your liver's good. See? Now, I don't, that could be hokum. I would pop it. All right. We'll pop it. We're going to continue that. I'm gonna pop Let's, it. A lot of these are just regular vitamins, but uh, there's a fish oils. We talked about that. Uh, now, you don't have to use fish oil per se. You know, it's a way to do it. But, you know, a lot of part of it, like when patients come in, I talk to them, you know, we can give you a pill and Americans love a pill for everything. But you can do the same thing just by dietary changes, you know? Well, I think alcohol is probably one of the big reasons. Even if my liver is good, the, the triglycerides, that I, what I, I saw it is sugars, fats, and booze. Yeah. Just fun. It's the trifecta of fun is what I should avoid. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to live too, you know? Yeah. So all things in balance. Yeah. You know? All right. Well, the guy that gave me, I just filled the prescription for the whatever. The Torvastatin, yeah. So that's a statin. Uh, you take it at night because that's when the cholesterol in your body is being made. Uh, I know that. This is a real low dose. Uh, so we'll check you in about three months and see where you know how your cholesterol is responding. I would anticipate probably bumping this dose up to twenty milligrams, or maybe eighty uh, in your case. Yeah, I, I read that. I'm going to put that in the pop. <laughs> yeah, this is just a, a, a century senior. It's a multivitamin, but does it really fucking matter if senior versus? Well, you got, you got to take a look at what's in it, right? Since I've taken bingo's uh, 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 prenatal, yeah. Like, what well, is there really a difference between senior and prenatal? And I'm same trying thing? to have like, a baby. Like, this, this may have like extra calcium for your bones versus like a non-senior. But I would say that every single human being, especially in the U.S., should be on a multivitamin. Because none of us are getting all of our vitamins and minerals from, from our diets. So I'm Yeah. In theory, you don't need this because you should be able to get all your food from your diet. However, yeah, yeah. nobody eats the fruits and vegetables that they're supposed to be doing. You know, you go to McDonald's or you get a pizza and, you know, stuff like that. But this has A, D, vitamins A, C, D, E, K, you know, so ADEC, those are the basic vitamins, thymine, good stuff, folate, B12. So here's that was another question. In like the fucking C's and B's, everyone knows those are good, but like there's 18 kind of B vitamins. Yeah, uh, it depends. You may have everything you need with D vitamin in here as well. Yeah. But and anything you go over in vitamin C, you're just gonna pee out. All right. And how much vitamin C is in there? Uh actually it's only 67% of your 60 60 milligrams, but 67% of your RDA. Okay. And you're not going to, you're also not going to absorb 100% of what you get. Right. right. So I'm going to speed again. round this cranberry <laughs> <with> pills. <laughs> cranberry pills better than juice because there's no sugar? Uh, I wouldn't do the cranberry pills unless, uh, like, females typically get urinary tract infections more frequently than males. And cranberry pill is better to help prevent the UTI, like at first signs of uh, urinary urgency frequency. If you take the pill, it's better than the juice because the juice typically has more sugar, yeah. which can hasten. So am I yeah. over, like, uh, if my, if my liver's that, doing yeah, all right, if my one. kidneys are doing all right, is it because well, you're, they take you're, fucking cranberry pills? Your kidneys, you have <laughs> no, that's chronic kidney that disease die. stage two. <laughs> what? <laughs> Sounds you horrible, this? doesn't it? Huh? Wait, I do? Yeah. Oh, you didn't tell but me that. He's going to give you the butt. All yeah. Right. Everyone. Everybody over good. the age of 30 has. Yeah. So, and you know, like chronic kidney disease stage one is normal, which is 90 or above. If you look at your lab results here. Yeah. All right. So if you went into a hundred doctors, 99 of them would say, they wouldn't say anything. They'd say your kidneys are fine, but you know, showmanship. But technically, your chronic kidney disease stage two. Who cares? What's it matter? How many stages are there? There's like five. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. I was really hoping you were going to say two. <laughs> 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 a much better podcast. Yeah. Please continue. <laughs> 
So the, the only thing, the only two things that you have to know is drink water, 64 ounces a day, right. uh, and then avoid NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, Motrin, Aleve, Naproxen, uh, Advil, Advil right. and just, avoid that's those. it. That's all you need to know. All right. You don't need to worry about it. And okay. we live in the desert. Right? Uh, you know what? We don't, they're not even a fucking sponsor anymore, but I still use liquid IV. I put in the water to drink more water. Well, maybe what? if they see this, they'll get back on board. Yeah, but the point is, it was any kind of supplement to water that has a bunch of stupid vitamins and you know, hangover remedies, it, it doesn't affect how much water you're drinking, right? Well, it may. I mean, you know, if you hydrate, it, it's better to overhydrate. You know, 64 ounces a day, which is a lot, you know, almost, you know, Two but say, if there's sugar in the 64 ounces I'm drinking because of liquid IV, that's not penalizing my... Uh, uh, no. Uh, if you drink caffeine, it might, because right. then you're peeing more, you know? So then you're not actually... Like, say you take in a glass, but you're also peeing out two glasses. All right. Let me get to the fucking stupidest ones and we'll move on. All right. Biotin. <laughs> For your skin and nails. All right. These are well, you Ac- look fantastic. So that's Ac- a judgment Ac- call. Yeah. Uh, I don't have these, but this yeah. is this is if you get the sick yeah. St. John's wort. <clears throat> Turmeric. Turmeric's supposed to be good. Turmeric is supposed to be have no right. thistle here. Yeah. Uh Valerian root. Yeah, that's supposed to be good. Melatonin. Valerian root also helps with um uh menopause <laughs> symptoms. Right. Or menopause in your case. <laughs> all right. Hey, I don't know how much of this bullshit. Uh, no. Chia, flaxseed, all this stuff I put in the... Flaxseed's uh, good. That's uh, uh, stuff you can mm. uh, put into smoothies. I just, I do flaxseed, but then I looked up, oh, well, you, you can also put ginger and chia seeds and hemp seeds. Like, how much shit do you really need to put in right. a, a smoothie? <clears throat> not a lot. I'm not, I'm, I know you're not a dietitian. <laughs> are, are we done with... The, is there any other things that I can... uh, uh, there's a few things that we can go over. Uh so your A1C, which is uh an important one, uh is great. Four point nine, no diabetes. Yay. All right. So diabetes is six point five, much like an earthquake, uh four point nine and six point five are very far apart. So yeah, that's a good thing. He's got he's got all of his he, Puts in frames and then every six months or so he puts in <laughs> with the an A plus. And we're gonna swing dicks at who has fucking lower or higher scores. <laughs> uh, yeah, no diabetes is great. Yep. So the cholesterol is two fifty five. The HDL or happy cholesterol is good at thirty two. Your lousy cholesterol or LDL it's one oh six. Supposed to be around a hundred or a little less than a hundred. It's one oh six. Eh, that's fine. And then again, your triglycerides are pretty much through the roof. And what does it matter? So, oh, well, that was, I, I was getting to that one. When this pharmacist gave me the, the statins, he said, uh, I, it made some joke about the, uh, the cholesterol. And he goes, yeah, well, but now that you're on these, you can eat anything you want. I mean, don't tell me that. <laughs> I'm overreacting in a good way. I'm like, yeah. Well, and that's what a lot of Americans do. You know, we, we don't change our behaviors. We just take a pill and go from there. You yeah, know? no, I, I I ordered a lot of supplements, too. So with that. your cholesterol, uh, so you do what they call uh, the cardiovascular risk. And I put your blood pressure in and your age and, you know, form a smoker. And you come out with a 17.5, 10-year risk of cardiovascular disease. What, right. What's that mean? That means in 10 years, you got a 17.5% risk of, like, cardiovascular disease, heart attack, stroke. Stuff like that. Okay, but that's not the COPD. He's stuff. gonna live to sixty six. Uh, <laughs> Jesus, this is. A, but you got a sixty nine percent lifetime risk. All right. So eventually, yeah. So you know, if you, it's like a warning sign in your car when the gas light goes on. You know, if you take corrective action, you know, it's not gonna, gonna break down. No, eventually, no. if you put gas in the car, you're gonna be fine. Yeah, but then eventually something's going to go wrong, so why bother? Get a new car. <laughs> Hemoglobin. <laughs> You're a globin. Hemoglobin. 
<laughs> yeah. So we'll start you on the statin therapy. We'll check back with you in three months. I'm just reading words. Like uh, your handwriting is very doctor esque. Yeah. And I just I was going to be a serial killer. Oh, attack parasites. You have attack parasites down. Yeah. Where are you reading? drinking when you did this? Probably. <laughs> Oh, what? yeah, because your eosinophils were slightly elevated. No big deal. Told you. And what are eosinophils? They're white blood cells. They're soldiers that go out to fight battles. Allergic reactions. They attack parasites. Stuff like that. <laughs> I, want, I want you to talk to me like you're a, a kid's doctor. Okay, imagine the white blood cells are mean <laughs> monsters. <laughs> Bingo, Bingo's going to um, get an appointment. She wants a, a full checkup for okay. me, too. So, yeah, maybe you can do that for her. Yep. 64 ounces of water daily. Yep. I'm doing it. Um, God damn it. I had fun. Oh, your B12, by the way, on the next page uh, was great. Oh, oh, two pages. And your vitamin D was great, 34. Oh, B12. That's, uh, yeah. And then Liquid the other, IB. And then the, the other product. thing, your prostate was fine. No kidding. Yep. Wow. Yep. That's what they eat. <laughs> I mean, I need to check it rather often. <laughs> I have people do it for me. <laughs> get the oil change. They get it. They get it. Uh, all right. So See, these murder. are the things that I was. Yeah, we're getting a murder here. Uh, it, it, how would I know? Like, yeah, fuck you. I mean, if I got enough medical Let's talk. Take a Oh yeah, uh, this, well, no, I want to do shitting and puking because this oh, is the right. most. This is the thing I forgot to tell you that when I when I went into the office, I had already had like half a dozen bouts of random like, uh, volatile diarrhea and vomiting to the point of dehydration, can't hold water down for how many days? Uh, no, no longer than twenty four hour period, but that whole twenty four hours. And uh, it was, I mean, I, I drink every night until the last few nights. Uh, and it, the, the first three times I had taken an edible and eaten like a fucking pig, just eating everything, <laughs> uh, like nonsensically. Yeah. But I didn't start vomiting or shitting till more than 12 hours later. Like it was, I ended at 11 o'clock at night and one o'clock in the afternoon, having felt fine. Just all of a sudden, blah, 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 and, yeah. And, and so that's typically like a gastroenteritis type of thing. You got a bad burrito, or you ate some leftovers that shouldn't have been eaten, or something it, like that. This was three times in four weeks, and then two other times since. And then it broke pattern where I didn't eat almost anything, and then it was just my body couldn't it was just getting rid of every fucking thing. So it's six times in uh, eight. So there is something called hyperemesis, where if you take in marijuana products that you can react like that with, uh, it's typically um, vomiting, right. less than diarrhea, but you could have that. So if you're doing the marijuana products, you could stop that and just do a test and see. But yeah, that's the thing. It was the, There was never a consistent pattern. Two of the times there was no weed involved at all. But there's a heavy eating, and there was none of it. Uh, and then, well, then there was <laughs> Joe Rogan. So, that, but there was no uh, volatile diarrhea on that. That was something completely different. I don't put that in the same category because it was all lucid and not, you know, hung over even. Yeah. So I should have told you that before all this. And maybe you could have looked for something. <clears throat> hey, we'll take a break and uh, refill these beers and then. Then the uh, sad, sad murder. As opposed to the happy murder that yes. you typically hear about. <laughs> you are listening to the Doug Stanhope Podcast. We're Still back. surprised that his liver enzymes are... They're better than mine were in my last <laughs> checkup. Is those the ones I called you about? They were AST and ALT. I remember. I if you them. started saying that, I would tune you out. <laughs> um, they were elevated. Yours are fine, and that doesn't like the world is unfair. Is all they? I'm you can't run from genetics too, you know. So maybe there's some component to that. And some people, they don't, you know, they'll eat a plant based diet, but their cholesterol is through the roof. So why is that? Yeah, genetics. Genetics, speaking of. <laughs>
Nice show. Yeah, yeah no, it's, mm-hmm. I, I didn't want to assume that you're a booze bag, but I kind of figured from. I would say booze bag. You know, I mean, you can't do anything. I was in the military for twenty years, right? right? So you can't, you can't, you can't be that way. I can't be that way. Okay, I'm putting you in the same category as Dave Ray or booze bag, mm-hmm. not uh, fighting <laughs> like to struggle with addiction. Booze right. bag, like fun booze bag, like. Cook spawn. Right, right. Like, oh, let's whip apples at the neighbor's house. <laughs> <laughs> Whipping yeah. crab apples. That kind of problem. Right. Uh, you and your brother, not uh, not so lucky. Not so lucky. Uh, and this goes back to, again, with, uh, with eight or ten was probably the last yeah. time I remember you being around the Cook's yeah. Pond scene. But your, your brother's how much older? So he's three years older. So he's 61. Right. And he's been in jail for 40 years uh, for murder. Uh, murder one, life without parole. Um, and, and he had a reputation when we were kids. Uh, he was an asshole. Uh, yeah, and, but uh, you, you, we never had a, an issue with you as a family. There were fucking assholes that we had problems with, like yeah. Joey Reynolds. And yeah, yeah, guys yeah. like that that break <laughs> into your fucking house and steal your booze. But yeah. you never had a. But he was. You knew your brother's name. Uh, yeah. You're my brother's age. Yeah. He's two years older than yeah. me. Uh, but your brother. He, he was like when you're that age, two years is a fucking it's a, huge it's a big jump, yeah. Yeah. So three years, he was he was a fucking rager. He was. And you know, like for me, going like siblings weren't something that were wonderful and joyous family. You know, siblings were something you avoided at all costs, or else you end up hanging from, you know, uh, a tree with uh, a hose in your pant leg or something, you know. <laughs> Yeah, but, Jeff Brown and my brother would guy was that guy. They'd do spit hangers over my face, right, hold me down, right. beat my ankles with a spoon. Yeah, that was <laughs> good times. Good times. Yeah. But yeah, he was a jerk and uh, a terrorizer and you know, uh much he, he ended up getting in a fight and um a bar fight and the whole thing was that he and another guy that he hung out with from uh, Lenox Square or whatever, in between Newton and Tatnick. Right. Um, but they got in a fight with a guy out in Shrewsbury, and uh, they said that, hey, they got a sample of Coke, and the other guy that was with my brother said, hey, this this isn't the same stuff that you gave me as a sample. This is different. And he was an asshole, too. Um, so fight ensued. And, you know, just a regular, essentially a regular bar fight, you know, which yeah. in Worcester is, you know, you go out, you yeah. get in a fight and that's... Take it out in the parking lot. Yeah. So he ended up dying, unfortunately, and I'm told that he was a nice guy and whatnot. Um, but they got him for murder one with extreme atrocity. They said that they, his, that he was um, pre-planning the murder before it happened, like an hour before it happened, you know, because you have to have premeditation right. for it. And I don't know. But so anyways, long story short, we got to see. Yeah, the story was lawyer. legendary, obviously, to us, because this happened in 1984. Yeah. So I would have been 17, I yeah. believe, where you don't even know anyone who's died yet, much less right. committed a murder. Right. <laughs> so... Yeah, so I, I mean, to this day, even before I knew that you were around here, yeah. every several years I'd, I'd Google, hey, whatever happened to Jeff Simpson? <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and then I'd fucking get a book in the mail. And I, of course, I think it's something I bought drunk on Amazon. <laughs> I go, oh, maybe I Googled him. And I saw your return address with Sierra Vesta. Yeah. And that's how we reconnected. But, yeah, which uh, is pretty amazing. Yeah. And he, he put out a self-published a book. Yeah. So let me, let me yeah, yeah, color yeah. in a little bit. So... So we got a crappy family lawyer and he did a horrible job and, you know, never even filed an appeal and never put forth, hey, you can plead down to manslaughter or murder too. But at the time, you know, manslaughter and murder too, when you're 20 years old and you're looking at 20 years, that's a lifetime. Yeah. So you're not going to do that. And most people thought, myself included, everybody included, that it was a manslaughter case. There were no weapons used aside from hands and feet, which, of course, can kill you and be bad. But uh, so he ended up getting convicted. The day the police came to the house, I thought they were coming to get me because I had been involved in a flight similar uh, the night before. And I was like, the cops knock on the door. They said, are you Jeffrey? 
I was like, oh, thank God. No, he's upstairs. So they dragged him out in cuffs. And uh, that day, I changed my whole life trajectory. You know, once this trial started happening, I stopped hanging around with the people I was hanging around. I stopped hanging around with the girl I was going out with. Started going to the library because nobody would find me in the library. Started reading self-help books and just taking total corrective action. Were you, like, getting to a place that was... I was 100% there. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. I, I thought you were one of the good ones. Well, I was, but I, I i don't know what it is, but like we have a tendency to go from zero to a hundred, you know, hot. So fighting was just an option. And really what I, you know, I ended up learning martial arts and stuff. But what I really learned was that I was fighting because I didn't know how to deal with the stress of the situation I was being put in. Right. You know, and and this is obviously what led you into the military. Uh, somewhat. I, I actually, my sister is a nurse, and she said, you know, I, I my when I went to school, uh, was to state, and the first year out of high school, I did horrible because, of course, I was doing stupid stuff and partying all night and doing poorly in school. So I told my parents. Well, actually, my parents told me when they saw my grades, they were like, yeah, you know what? You're not taking this seriously. So, uh, we're not paying for school. Oh, fine. Fuck you. I don't need you. Storm out of the house. And I was like, oh Jesus, now what do I do? And then I ended up joining the national guard and they wanted me to drive a tank. I was like, well, driving a tank would be cool, but I'd really like to do something that has a civilian job. So they said, what about being a medic? I said, yeah, I'd like medic EMT. That'd be cool. So I went to school for that, and then uh, that that's kind of my first exposure to the military. Right. I don't want to get off Jeff. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's important. And we are, as I told you, we're murderer-friendly on the podcast. <laughs> we have a well, couple of regulars that. that call in. I just got a uh, friend, Twyman, just sent me a, mm. a picture. Yeah. He murdered his mother and his, yeah, off his meds kind of way. But uh, yeah. this, and that's, this kid is out. This kid basically... Is on work release seven years later. Your yeah. brother, 40 years, and at this point, no chance in Massachusetts. Uh, the, so the, they, he went to the Supreme Court. They said no. Uh, they did say that, you know, yes, your lawyer did suck. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't say that you're entitled to a good lawyer. So too bad, so sad, see you later. And now the only possible... so. He, he just got his shot final shoot down six months ago. Well, I guess it was a year about now. And I thought for sure he'd suicide out, you know, because that's it. Parents are dead. No more chance. What's over 40 you years. Alive? You thought that several times. I thought he was going to do it from day one. Right. Yeah. I, I can't imagine. I would have done it. Yeah. You know, so I can't picture being in that situation for 40 years. And at Walpole. You know, Walpole's the worst of the worst, scared straight, all that stuff. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, it was like a combat zone. And if you, from what I'm told, if you, you know, it's a racial thing. So guess what? If you're white, then you're with the whites. And if you're told to go to the yard and everybody's doing battle, then you got to go. You know, that was in Walpole. But once you get out of Walpole and you got into Norfolk, which is just down the street two miles, uh, but it's a world of difference. So he got a job and he started taking. So in Walpole, they're just warehousing. Walpole is closed now. Oh, yeah? Yeah. But uh, in Norfolk, they do some rehabilitation. So they do like a, uh, you know, one, you have a job. Two, you can go to like classes on um, uh, victim. Uh, what's it called? I don't know. Uh, yeah, I have to. We do it, but basically, the families of uh, people that have been murdered come into the prison. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. And they'll talk to the people, and you know, just by seeing that, okay, you know, you murdered somebody, but I can see you're still a human. Yeah. And it really sucks that you did this, you know. So each side Which tells you about the impact. Yeah. yeah. So like a victim impact. impact that's not. Yeah, yeah, that's not what it is, but it's something similar to that. Uh, reparative justice, that's what it's called. Oh. So uh, so the, he started doing that, and he started 
you know, learning how to speak Spanish. And now he's teaching guys like when you grow up speaking Spanish, a lot of just like us, you don't learn proper English. You know, you don't learn how to conjugate the verbs and what the hell's a verb. Yeah. You know, so he's been putting stuff out there. He's working. He's, you know, he's positive. So instead of getting the suicide, he became more positive, more focused on uh, on what involved. Yeah, it's, because when you said, "Yeah, I would definitely suicide out," is would always be my first thought, even for you know, just a fucking DUI. Four hours, <laughs> I don't have this. I'm scared. This lunch is awful. Uh, but like, as when you when you think about forty years, and he's now in his sixties, uh, and finding purpose for the first time yeah. in his life, I would be scared to get out. Right. Because I mean, we're, we're not preaching that. We're saying write the governor. But yeah. <laughs> I personally. No, it'd right. be, you know, it'd be a hell of a change. Because when he went in, you know, uh, there were no ATMs. There were no cell phones. Or, you know, maybe if somebody rich guy had a cell phone, but not ubiquitous like yeah. everybody has one. Uh, so, yeah, it'd be a hell of a change. Uh, he does, you know, have access, like I'm able to send him an email. Uh, they don't have computers like with open access, but they do tablets. have tablets that yeah, they can just go with it. certain places. You know, they can't do yeah. porn and stuff. And they've long since gotten rid of, uh, you know, Hustler and all the magazines yeah. in the prison because it was uh, sexual harassment to the guards, you know, so. Oh, yeah. No, everything. Smoking. I, yeah. I think smoking mm. was probably the last thing. Like, yeah, the last Where they go, but they're going to fucking riot. Yeah. You're, you're trying to kill us. Right. You're trying to have us killed. You're going to take cigarettes out of prisons. Yep. So, so he, then he, he came up, he proposed the idea to me that he wanted to write a, a book about being in a positive mindset, regardless of circumstances. I was like, holy crap, that's pretty amazing. And the first thing I heard was, oh, shit that I'm going to have to learn how to write a book because I don't know anything about this. And, you know, so he started writing stuff down and I started putting it on computer and uh, editing it. And it was really hard not to edit my own thoughts into uh, his yeah. interpretation because, you know, you and your brother, different views on the world and who what's right, you know. Yeah. But I, I kept wanting to change stuff. So I, I just said, okay, I'm going to put it in exactly... I'll let my wife edit a little bit because she doesn't have that experience. And I don't agree with everything that he put in the book, uh, you know, but the take home point, there's several take home points. One, uh, that being positive in any mind state, you know, you get what you give. So if you put out negative, you get back negative. And he started putting out positive, got back positive. The, uh, The other thing is, you know, in there, there's a part on it about brain science. And that, that brain science is basically science that says when you're a young developing adult, you're an insane person. It's you know, well, and we all know that's true, yeah. true, right? So you make rash decisions, you make bad decisions, you get volatile quickly, you know, and as you get older, that all goes away and you learn how to get along or you hopefully learn how to get along. And uh, so there's a big part of that. And, you know, if I didn't have my brother's situation, I could easily be one of those guys. Hey, you know what? They did the crime. Let him do the time. Too bad. Have a nice so life. In my notes, one of the first things you, you said to me when we talked about it at the appointment was uh, it made me a better person. Yeah. Because you would have been that guy. And- yeah. Yeah, probably. And I would have been just another carbon copy of my brother had his situation not right. happened. So I become a better person and I try and help those around me in whatever circumstances they're in, uh, you know, to get healthy, to get, get whatever they need. Do you ever get to a point where you're like, fuck you, you did this to yourself. Like, what, I mean, how many arcs of his, or, or Oh, you, you mean to my brother? Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Like, I hate to use recovery as a word, but to, get to the point where he is, where he's like, fuck you and lashing back at the system. And then there's family as well. Were there times where you're like, ah, I don't need this. Most of the time in the early years, you know, I was like, you know, you, you got yourself here and I don't think you're going to be able to get out of this one, you know? So 
much like the guy then died, uh, you know, if you get stabbed and then walk 300 yards or die three years later from it, it's still trauma related, you know, death. You said you got into a fight. The same way the night yeah, before. Do yeah. you send that guy flowers still? To make sure he's all right. <laughs> no, but hope no, but you know it, it's. I just changed. Yeah, I, but I talk about that all the time. Where uh, you know, on stage, where you, you have to realize how close we were at any given time. When you read a story yeah. about kids throwing a cinder block off an yeah, overpass right. as a goof, yeah. and, but it kills a lady yeah. now. Like, how many fucking times was that, that us with the cinder block? Way or, too many times, yeah. you know, and you get away with some of it, but you don't always. And a, one bad decision to get in that fight, you know, to do whatever, take the drink, drive, whatever the case may be. And you, I'm so, I, early on, I had like dreams that I'd be in jail and, you know, it, I'd wake up and just be sweating. But then I learned how to control my dreams and stuff. And then so I could exit early dream. on uh, when he got arrested. OK, so the first 10 years I'd wake up thinking I'm in jail. So you, you can lucid dream now? Yeah, pretty because much. Because of that? Well, not because right. of that, because of the work I put in right. to read about it, because I didn't like being in that dream. I, oh, you know, wow. I'd wake up my heart pounding and stuff. So now I can just get out of the dream you know, by turning it off, essentially. All right. Pretty cool. They, do you know that you're in it? Yeah. All right. Yeah. I don't, well, that's a whole other conversation. <laughs> but I, I when we're looking at my diabetes, when I was a kid, <laughs> I always knew that one day I'd go to uh, go to prison and I'd have diabetes. And I think it's because you were threatened with that. If you keep eating candy, you know, you're going to get diabetes. Yeah. If you fucking keep talking back, you're going to wind up in jail. Yeah. And I was I'm fucking terrified as a yeah. you know, this is, you know, 1979. It's like fucking 11 years old, knowing that this is going to happen to me because yeah. candy was too fucking good. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, back oh, to the book, the book. with. Uh, so now the oh. only option that he has, well, there's two options. One, that there's a societal change towards prisoners as opposed to screw them, keep them locked up forever. Maybe society will say, you know, maybe when you get locked up at 21, you shouldn't be in jail for the rest of your life. If you can show that you've grown or participated in or whatever. And, you know, who knows? I, I never thought we'd see like, legalization of marijuana or anything like that but here it is i think the only way you could really make that happen from a, a personality point of view as a candidate or whatever is to kind of criminalize like, your brother and go this is bullshit these guys should be out on the street paying for their own fucking it shouldn't come out of the taxpayer this guy's 61 what he's not going to cause any problems and it's you you should be tired of paying for this fucking asshole <laughs> and make him an asshole again to get him out. And I think that's the only way it works is trick the customer. Well, it, that's a way. Uh, so hey, I just want to, uh, how do we get the book? Any of the local Amazon or whatever. I, it's on Amazon. Yeah. That's all you need to say. Yeah. Walking in darkness, walking in light by Jeffrey A. Sinnott, S-I-N-N-O-T-T. I just wanted to get that out there. I didn't want yep. to cut you off. but yep. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah. Uh, just fine. So then the other possibility is a governor's commutation, right? And what's the new what's governor? the chances of that? Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't remember who it is right now. But, you know, obviously it's low chances, you know, essentially zero. But they just the other day, the lifers group uh, that they're that they have at the prison, they had five representatives from Massachusetts, Worcester and a whole bunch of other places talking to the lifers group about trying to affect change, you know, and really if you keep him in jail till he's dead, you know, 80% of the costs when he's on life support and stuff are going to come near the end of his life. So you're going to spend way more money keeping him alive. Kill him, right? Earlier on, like just go with the death penalty or don't warehouse them, but teach them skills. So when they go back out welding or something, so when they go out, they can get a job, teach them how to be uh, a human person. Yeah. And that's know? why you have to say that like an asshole. 
because otherwise they turn that into coddling. The, no, yeah. you want your fucking. But you're not, you're not going to want to. You're not going to want to release an asshole. Exactly. So, so if you say it's more cost effective to rehabilitate a person who's now been in jail for forty years and get them out into this program than it is to just keep them in jail and you know keep the guards union working. Right. Uh, fucking unions are. <laughs> Unions are the, the biggest fucking problem in most of these prison justice fucking equations. Correctional officers, police unions. Anyway. <laughs> well, there's murder. <laughs> uh, I think maybe one of us should run for governor of Massachusetts. My God. Who wants to run? You know, like your whole life gets picked apart. Presidency? Are you kidding me? I don't want Biden. I don't want Trump. Can't we get somebody that's reasonable and maybe 60 years old? <laughs> you know? Yeah, I, just, I, I'm not a, I, I, don't, I don't follow the sport. <laughs> it's just like you know, politics is something that happens. And yeah. You just have to it's, avoid it like, yeah. like predators. Yeah. But, like you know, part of, part of the thing, too... Uh, as you may recall, my mom was in politics. Oh, that's so right. So she was yeah. the vice mayor of Worcester. So when he got arrested, of course, big scandal. Yeah. And everyone was saying, oh, they're going to get off because, you know, they, they're rich. And we were never rich. We had a big house, but no money, you know. And yeah, we, we did that for a few <laughs> years in Paxton where we had the biggest house right in the town square because my stepfather. Yeah. See, but it was shit. The inside was just complete fucking worse hair plastered right. fucking bad bad electricity but it looked like we had money even though we didn't right yeah we still wore tough skins when everyone had Levi's yeah it sucked but yeah you had a fucking <laughs> mansion it was yeah it was part of the underground railroad and, yeah yeah it was pretty neat we'd go there for um you know sixth Literally grade field trips yeah that's railroad. yeah cool. yeah right. it was pretty neat and then uh we did that we'd go to my house for <clears throat> Field trips until our pony stepped on Timmy St. Pierre's foot and broke his foot. <laughs> that was the end of that. <clears throat> I, I wish I chimed in right there. We'll never forget Timmy St. Pierre Fuck with that you, fucking Timmy. limp. <laughs> All right, sir. Um, I'm very uh, overall. I'm so excited to hear you don't have kids. I don't know why I had that picture, but now I know we can actually hang out again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I never wanted them. I liked them, you know, but. My so out of four kids, one sister had kids, which kind of confirmed our other decisions not to have kids. But you know, my brother was down, so no kids. I just never saw the need for them. Plus, my mom always was like, "Boy, this sucks having kids," you know. And that's what yeah, there's a lot of that in the book. Yeah, uh, yeah. And you pick up, you know, you pick up on that as a kid, and you know. Somehow you all survive. We all survive, or some of us don't. Yeah, you know, salmon running up the stream, and some get yep. eaten by the bear, and some make it up. Some just to, bad coke. just to blow their load and go floating back downstream. <laughs> it was a pleasure, sir. <laughs> good talking. We'll with have you. you back with the fucking new blood work and just to hang out. Let's good. eat some chili. Let's do Shall it. we? Hey, Bingo, come take us out live. Come run, 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 run. <laughs> Oh, you got to get jacket. Oh, wardrobe change. I'm going for a God damn it. Okay. Okay. Cholesterol. Okay. Bye bye, guys.